Oh, that was hysterical. A dollar ninety-nine for an angel food cake? Yes, that's what they cost thirteen years ago. Do you know what they cost today? Five ninety-nine. Do the math. From a dollar ninety-nine, it's over twice as much as it was. I can't believe that. Thirteen years ago, we did that program. And you know how I know that? Johnson has grown, gone to college. <laughs> She's an adult now. It's so funny to look back. And yeah, you could walk in the local grocery store and you could buy an angel food cake prepared. That recipe is so easy, so good. And if you're going somewhere in a hurry and you've got the grandkids and you're stressing to death because how am I going to cook anything? How am I going to do anything? That is so simple. Get the grandkids in the kitchen. Let them take those three ingredients, Cool Whip, the crushed pineapple, and the instant pudding mix and stir it all up and then let them, you know, put it in the layers. And when I do it, I always do the icing on the outside too. I make an extra batch of the um, frosting. So, so good, so yummy. Then I decorate it with strawberries or blueberries, something like that. So it's so easy, so easy. But $1.99, walk in the store today and call me. Say, Sherry, I can't get a $1.99 cake. No, you can't. You can't even make one for $1.99. I have got to give y'all some of the best news I've had in forever. <clears throat> I've called Congress. I've called the Senate. I've tried to get in touch with somebody at the governor's office. Nobody can help when you're facing foreclosure. There's no help out there. So everybody knows that um, I was trying to help a family. I asked all of y'all to pray about this. And two weeks ago yesterday, sadly, we lost that home on the courthouse steps. <clears throat> well, yesterday, I was on the phone and I was explaining to one of our politicians uh, what had happened, what can we do to change this? Are there laws that can be put into place that this doesn't happen to another family? And we're, you know, 15 minutes in the conversation and I look down on my phone and I'm getting a call. And it's from the gentleman who purchased it on the courthouse steps. And I'm going, oh, what does he want? So finish the conversation, I call him back and he said, it was like 8.42 yesterday morning. I was, you know, what am I gonna hear from him? He said, I guess you'd like to hear this news. And, and I gotta tell you, the the first of the story before that. Yesterday morning, I woke up really, really early. I didn't sleep probably 10 minutes the night before. It was just, uh, I had a lot on my mind and I was just going through, why did this fail? Why did this happen? Why did this? And it's because Satan does show up. Satan shows up every day. I got up yesterday morning and I opened my Bible and I usually open it twice and then decide what I'm gonna read. So I opened it and I looked and I said, okay, Job again. That's weird, why am I going back to Job? And I'm reading and I read about eight verses and I looked and I said, hmm, interesting. So I closed the Bible and I, I went in, started getting ready for work, put my coffee on. And then I make, the conversa I make the phone call to the politician. And everything was going well. He said, I wish I could help, but you can call this guy and maybe we can get some help. And, and we're just, you know, and I get this call in the middle of that. And so when I call him back, he said, I thought you would like to know that they have rescinded my buy on the courthouse steps and we're not gonna get the property. And I broke out in tears and I started to shout. And I was like, if I shout, the neighbors are gonna think I've been hurt, you know? So I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I get off the phone with him and I call the guy who's over there who has now, and I have cracked up, Almost everything's gone out of the house now because he was in such a panic that they were gonna make him leave this weekend. He's hauled off, given away, taken care of, donated to the homeless. He's done everything. And now he gets to stay for a little bit longer and I'm like, well, you can sit on the floor, I guess. But isn't that amazing how God stepped in? And if you've read the Bible and you know about Job, he lost everything, but then he got it back like in triplicate in ten time fold, tenfold. It was crazy. It was crazy. So I said yesterday was kind of like my great day. It was just a great day. It was just a great day. And it started because I had some things planned that I needed to do. And one of them was to try to figure out how we're going to figure out a place for this gentleman to end up with no money coming in. It's it's gonna be really, really hard. 
And then, bam, 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 it just lined up. And so now it lines up and we go to probate on, I think it's April the 18th, and that gives us a little bit of saving grace, a little bit of time. We can now sell the property so the family, even the heir that didn't do what he was supposed to, and the good heir, as I refer to them, um, will get to split whatever money we can get out of the house. So it gives us time to market the house. That's amazing. That is amazing. It doesn't always work out this way. And you talk about God. I, I saw God big and personal yesterday. I was like, are you kidding? And then I kept thinking about Mike's book. God shows up. God does show up. Often he shows up when you least expect him. Sometimes you wait and wait and wait. And then you're like, where is he? Why isn't he here? Why is he not helping me? I don't know why he's not. But I want to share something with y'all. Last year we talked a lot about planning the end of your life, making sure that you get exactly what you want at the end of your life. If you want to give it all to charity, and we talked about this, Daddy gave everything to the Kiwanis, the Shriners, the um, Kiwanis, Shriners, Optimist, and something else. Huh, can't remember. But his attorney handled everything. The attorney also bills by hours because they get paid. So, you know, during your lifetime, sit down and plan all of this and tell your attorney, this is what I want, this is how I want it handled, and this is how I want it carried out. It's as simple as an hour-long meeting with your attorney and say, this is what I want to do and this is how I want to do it. But think about it before you do it because what happened to this family could have been avoided if the son who had been the caretaker, if the son who has the college degree, if the son who could manage things had been allowed to just be the executor, we wouldn't have had the problem and wouldn't have got to the courthouse steps to begin with. Now, I posted that video of the courthouse steps on YouTube because I want you to know if you don't take care of things like that, it could happen. And it's very scary to be standing there at the courthouse and know that your home your everything is about to be gone. And so I think it's a lesson for everybody. And um, plan it wisely. Do it with somebody you trust. And, and don't, you know, don't take everything you've worked for all your life and frivolously let it go away by deciding you want to do that mortgage that charges you a whole lot more interest than you need to be paying. If you really want to get rid of if you, if you want to get rid of debt, then sell your home and get top dollar for it. And then do what you want to with that money. Go rent yourself a place, go travel and do cruises. There's been people on the news who are doing a cruise every week. Instead of renting a place, they go on a cruise every week and then they don't have to have a house. Now that's pretty weird. I don't know if I could do that. But people are doing, they're doing, you talk about diversity. Yeah, it's, it's a different way of, a different lifestyle but you decide how you want things to be handled. But don't leave a mess for your family and don't have them standing on the courthouse steps knowing that everything that you've worked for, that your husband worked for, everything that you had accumulated is gonna be gone in just a flash. Don't do that. So do some planning. We're gonna take you now to a visit with O'Neill who came, um, she works for Hartman Law. I've used Hartman Law for many, many, many years, too many years. Love them to death. They are so easy to deal with, so easy to talk to. And I want you to listen to what O'Neill says when it's time to plan. And, and who knows what the end of our life is going to be. We see people in their 40s who it's the end of their life. We see people in their 90s it's the end of their life. But make sure you plan well. So here we go.